probably clicking on this video and like, what authority she have to help me edit. Um, I used to be an Instagram editor, so not trying to flex or anything. <laughs> showing you guys how I edit, the editing program that I use, plugins, transitions, effects, all the information that you need that some people just don't tell you. Um, I'm at a cabin so the aesthetics are kind of off. I mean I have this wood table here and this old couch and some wood paneling and a moose lamp. We're okay. It's fine. I didn't want to make this video eight months ago when people asked me to because I was like, mm. you know, like I was kind of like a bitch. I was like, I don't want people to like take my tricks. Like, which is honestly just such a stupid thing. You're not special sweet just because you use a certain text or intro. So first, equipment. I have a Nikon D3400. I wouldn't like specifically recommend this camera, but it's just what my dad had, even though he didn't use it, whatever. It doesn't have like a flip back lens, it doesn't have, which is kind of nice because like I never look at myself. I'm always looking at the lens. It doesn't have a port where you can put your microphone in because it's just not made that way. So I wouldn't recommend the camera, but phone camera works literally honestly great. Any clips that I film for a vlog that isn't at home, I use that. I just use a cheap ring light from Amazon, random tripod, random holding tripod. Kind of not important in the details. They are what they are. Okay. So the editing software that I use is Sony Vegas Pro 16, I believe. Not saying that I legally download it, but I know that you can. And there might be a link in the description. It's not trying to get sued. A plugin that I use is Sapphire. Also link something for how you can get it for free. But the reason I use these programs and not like Final Cut Pro or whatever is, I don't know if you guys knew this about me, but I started editing in like 2017 because I had editing accounts for fandoms to pop in and say the reason like real editors from instagram would use sony vegas pro or after effects is because they're much more conducive to transitions and different effects that you can do so that's why i really like vegas pro i would 10 out of 10 recommend vegas pro over final cut pro it's so good i love it i've tried final cut pro and it's just like kind of weird definitely would recommend Vegas Pro. Okay, so when I start editing, what I'll do is I'll just import all the footage and I'll just do a rough cut. I'll cut out all breaks, all pauses, all unnecessary stuff, which is generally what takes a lot of time, which is surprising. And then I save that, make a new document, and then import that so it's like one big clip. That way I just get less confused. That is like my final cut, even though it's like not my final cut, but I just call it the final cut because I don't know what else to call it. I start off with my intro. And so the intro, I need to find an audio. So generally I search on YouTube, like non-copyright aesthetic audios. So then I put them into like a downloader and I download them on my computer. Uh, YouTube has a really strict copyright policy, which kind of sucks. Cause they'll put ads on your video for a 10 second song, give all the money to like Pitbull or whoever. It's really annoying. Okay, so I'll find a song and then I'll take my traditional loading, please wait. Any of these little intro things you can just download from YouTube. If you just search like loading, please wait, DHS. I will find a few other clips that I think are like cute aesthetic or like showcase part of the video. I'll put them right at the beginning of the video. What I used to do is I do like zoom out, rotate, slide, slide, right, slide, left. But recently I've been doing this like VHS effect. I'll just show you guys how I do it. As I would go to my video effects. First I would add noise and I have this preset, but you would hit default and then noise level to 0.082. I don't know if anyone wants this information, but I'm just telling you guys it's a big part of how I edit. I love adding this effect. Scroll all the way down to stereoscopic 3D adjust, and I will create a horizontal offset of minus 0.0040. I will scroll all the way up to the color curves, and then basically what I do is I just, but you just kind of take the line and you move it upwards a little bit, and then you have the kind of VHS look. And you can definitely get Sapphire for Final Cut Pro and do the same exact thing if you use Final Cut Pro. And then I will change the settings so we have bars on the side to standard TV aspect radio. And then what I do, sorry, I'll link the green screen that I use in the description, but yeah. I'll add that into a new track layer, rid of the audio, and then I'll go to video effects, and then you have to do chroma key. So this basically gets rid of the green and it makes it an overlay. So then I use this little guy to click on the green so it's a better image. But I'm not really a fan of like the blue and red sides. So I'll just make it the same crop as the rest. So, so far we have this pretty cool VHS style. 
but it's missing an important factor, which is text. So I'll go to Legacy Text VHS. The font that I use is VCR OSD Mono, and how to get the font is you basically just go into the fonts. And I'll just pick a random font. So we're gonna hit download. There are so many good fonts. Like Defont is the best thing ever, and I'm obsessed. So you open it. You have to get a extraction tool as you did in WinRAR. Click on .otf file, and you get this open, and you hit install. And once it installs, you can just use it on whatever editing software you use. So that's really good to know. I love Defonts, where I get all my fonts. And then the format is just AM date year pretty simple. I italicize it and then I just move it to the bottom left hand corner. But for whatever reason, I just love this effect. And I do the same on the loading please wait time transition. So let me show you guys a basic transition from this clip. I will link some of my favorite editing tutorials for like zoom out, zoom ins, because they're actually really confusing at first. But you do need a fire plugin for all this and it's super easy to download. When you put in an effect, you have your keyframe bar down here, which is this is the start of your clip and this is the very end of your clip. So like going one with your key is a keyframe. So I go all end and I make the Zest with four. Then I just go one, two, three, four, five. Right click on the first keyframe and I go slow. And I right click on the second keyframe and I go slow. And I set wrap X to reflect, wrap Y to reflect. You guys are probably so confused. This is the most confusing thing ever. I'm so sorry. I'll like an actual tutorial. I just wanted to show like a basic of what I do. So I'll drag the preset. I actually find editing to be so enjoyable and I love that I started out on Instagram because it just made me a lot better at like understanding transitions and how to do that stuff and like more complicated parts of editing, you know? Okay, so that this is what our transition looks like. I hate my computer so much, it's so shitty. Cute, right? That's how I make my transitions basically. And then I'll like a whole bunch of the other ones I do, I'll do like slide right, slide left, zoom in, zoom out, rotate, yada yada yada. And so in the beginning of my intros, I'll generally put this picture up. It's like my titles. So for this, I go into Fonto. I select a plain image. And then recents, I like just like a blue. And for the dimensions, I end up setting it to 6S plus, whatever. And then I'll just type Izzy Parody. So fun. And then I'll just copy it a bunch of times for the second one. Then I just save it. And then I upload it into OneDrive. And then what I'll do, say let's put it after this clip. Go File, Import. And I'll go into my OneDrive. OneDrive has been my best friend because I don't have a Mac, I can't just airdrop things. What I like to do to give it more fun is I'll go to video effects and then I use S shape. Uh, presets have helped me a lot. You just like preset the effect. So I'll put amplitude 0.272 and frequency 1.93. It just bounces it around a little and you can just increase those if you want it to be like a more intense, like shaky kind of thing. So once I finish my intro then, Intros are really important, it helps you watch time, so that's why I work on them a lot. Then what I'll do is just go through the rest, cut out like weird pauses or breaths because I take a lot of deep breaths before I talk, or when I just stumble on my words and repeat sentences a few times, sometimes I say cringy things and fix it, which is the beauty of YouTube. So if you meet me in real life and I'm awkward as hell and you were expecting it, um, blame it on social media. Just add any zooms. So I'll show you guys how I do my zooms. I honestly don't know if this is useful information. I guess maybe someone uses Sony Vegas Pro who edits YouTube videos. Okay, so say I wanted to zoom in on this receipt. I would just make a little clip, hit the square. If I just wanted to have it zoom, I would just pan the thingy farther in. And then if you look at it, like it just goes in for a second or you can make that longer if you want sometimes if i'm saying something really stupid so i'll put a keyframe at the beginning and then keyframe at the end and i'll just do a zoom at the end so this way it's more of a slow zoom this way it's a slow zoom you see that oh it's different so if I want to add text to this, what I do is I go down to media generators, titles of text, and then I'll add sample text. I use presets, which is really great. I forgot how to do that. I prefer K-Bril. I don't know why, but I'm just a K-Bril girl. Say I wanted to move it around, I literally can just move it while I'm clicked on it. And if I wanted to save this as a preset just so I can like already have my font and more of the size picked out, I can just click on this um, preset, I guess. That is does not say preset, and then I'll save it. And now this way, if I just want to start with something similar to that, I click on it and just drag it in. 
it's pretty great guys so now that we have the text and the zooms so if you see any like overhead just words in this video i want to do that in this video so if they're there good job props to you um if they're not this is awkward and not useful information what i'm gonna do for that is i'm gonna go on to sketchbook pro on my phone i'll just do it on my phone for example because the surface pro is dead um this is a free version of procreate it's like the same thing and it works for windows so you can get it on your computer but if you have nimble fingers you can just use it on your phone or if you don't have any other options generally that's more the case open okay what i do is i'll set the background to a green color okay i kind of like just doing some cursive so I'll take the paintbrush make it pretty small and then i'm going to change the color because it's literally to just white so i'll just write hi because that's pretty easy and i'll zoom in and just move up there okay so say that's some important thing that we wanted to set i'm importing it and i'm gonna put it on onedrive because onedrive is my best friend oh here she is why did she look like that it's fine okay what we're gonna do is we're gonna give it a 90 degree angle so i just want to say hi right in the middle and then what you use is you use a chroma key here i recently learned this and it has changed my life so what you do is sorry for not making a lot of eye contact but i'm like trying to show you guys how to do this you should just have a normal chroma key on any editing software you use you put on green screen and what I do to make sure the color is correct is you use the little marker thing we used earlier, and then you have that. And it just says hi, or whatever your title is that you want to use. Isn't that so cute? I love that. That's so cute. Like, don't you guys just... <laughs> yeah, that's basically everything I do to edit the meat of my video, but we're not done. I'm going to go show you guys my rendering settings because... It took me a while to figure them out, and I want to show them to you guys. Double tap on everything, you go to File, Render As, and under Sony AV MC Concept, Internet 1920x1080. So I have frame size on high definition, frame rate on 60 basically, the render quality is best. So, now it's time to talk thumbnails. I'll make you guys an example thumbnail together. Normally what I end up doing is I'll take a screen grab from what I'm editing. I'll just like pose for a thumbnail randomly, like like that or whatever, and then I'll save that. Say I wanted my thumbnail to be this picture. So I would take a screenshot of that, and then I will upload it to my phone with OneDrive. Like I said, OneDrive is my baby. And then I love using Lightroom. It's such a good editor. It's free and it's an app, so definitely recommend that. Finally, I'll turn the exposure up. I'll just do what I feel like needs to be done. One of my favorite things to do is I'll turn down the saturation of the yellow or the green because my room is like, green and it comes out really ugly on camera so i can basically make it look like in my thumbnail that my room is like gray which is pretty dope i'll turn the luminance down to make myself tanner on the orange vibrance turn up the saturation this is a pretty plain image so i don't i wouldn't really use this for a thumbnail personally but to each their own maybe turn up the blue because there's blue in my shirt and my phone case give it some color dynamics desaturate the yellow and then I'm gonna crop it because it's kind of ugly. I have no idea when that cut off, but I have my thumbnail imported onto my phone and it's screen recording, so import photo. And then I import the music photo. I'll go in with my paintbrush pen, it'll make it really small. And then I like to outline my body in white. Um, a lot of YouTubers actually do that. Or, sorry, if this is like a sloppy job, it's because it's really hard to just your phone. It literally just makes like your body pop against the background, makes you like stand up against other thumbnails. <laughs> I normally don't do this on my phone, my fingers aren't nipple enough for this. There she is. Increase my brush size. Okay, I'll write like cabin vlog for example. What I really love doing is cursive, so I just put my brush size low. The reason it looks so bad is because I normally do this on, here I'll show you. Normally I make my thumbnails for my videos on this Surface Pro with a little pen, which I cannot find at the moment. I would recommend doing it on your computer if you have one, you can just download the app Sketchbook. It's so much better than doing it on your phone. That was the worst experience I've ever had. I just upload that to YouTube. It has to be less than two megabytes, so you can just go to a file converter if it's too big. Or you just email it to yourself and select a smaller file size. Oh, another way that I make my thumbnails is I use Photogrid. 
It's an app where you can basically just put two different photos on the same page. Just select two photos. It's a great app. Love it. I'll edit the photo that makes in Lightroom so it just looks more concise and smooth and not like it's two separate photos but more like one. That is how I edit my YouTube videos. If you guys like this video, please let me know. Give it a thumbs up. Comment down below anything that you want. If you guys want more YouTube related videos coming up on my one year anniversary of YouTube, which that's mind-boggling to me. Yeah, if any of you out there are looking to start a channel and want to, do it. It's the best decision I've ever made. I have a lot of more helpful videos that I think you guys will like coming up soon. So, if you guys like that stuff, subscribe. Bye. I love you.